Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Clone Wars retrospective, or I guess not a retrospective, the Clone Wars Season 7 review. I am... Oh, boy. I don't know. I'm... Uh, I have no idea. I, I am the uh, confused trust now. Yeah, I'm the long-distance Taylor Field. Yeah, so... And I'll probably say this every cast. We do this for the next little while. That um, So due to the COVID-19, we are, for safety purposes, doing some remote podcasting. And you guys, if you're listening to this, you get to be the big guinea pig. So we hope it here it sounds good and everything like that. But uh, for the, I'd say for the first few weeks... Hopefully, there's not a first few weeks. Hopefully, it's just a, a few weeks and that's it. But if it is, there's going to be some, like, toughness. I think we're going to have to, like, try it out and figure out and everything like that. But uh, So that's why the quality is not as much as it was before. But yeah, we're trying to figure you're all out and if you're watching on video this one will just be a thumbnail in the future maybe there will be like webcams of us but me and taylor just had two experiences where i froze and then he came back to life but then he froze and blah 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 so we're, we're working on we're figuring it all out we'll hopefully because we weren't we were not planning this right taylor field um well no i mean we didn't help engineer COVID 19 it just kind of sprouted on us so i i meant we didn't plan the like oh, to skype cast yeah that's uh, that too <laughs> wow well, yeah we, we didn't plan yeah because i know you and i are in the camp we like being in person we like uh vibing off each other so we'll try our best taylor am i still frozen for you over there let's take a look uh yeah it's funny because you're like <laughs> you're frozen with your face like looking sideways so your eyes are looking to the side perfect or something. perfect well that, that there's the only benefit i was in a row but i just jumped in the shower so i didn't have to get like show ready but you know what we got lots of stuff to talk about today we're going to talk about i haven't even pulled imdb but uh, the reason I haven't pulled up IMDb is because usually we do review the show, and that's what we're going to do. We've reviewed every episode of the entire show so far, so you can go back. You can check out the last four weeks when we did the entire Bad Batch arc. But then also just for today, because it, it's funny that this news dropped, and I imagine maybe whoever was the scooper was waiting to drop it on this day. We have some news, and usually we don't do that on a review, but we kind of have to just because I feel like it's it's pretty like it's pretty spicy one, but it's pretty, um, I think, may, like, pretty in sync with what we're talking about today as far as an episode so i'm gonna give you the news here so this is coming from slash film so i'd say when we always rank scoopers and whatnot this is probably like a b plus tier so not a b tier but not a plus tier or not a tier they're not like a hollywood report or whatnot but so it's come out they haven't no one's confirmed it yet but there's a rumor going around that uh and it's reported by multiple sources according to this person that rosario dawson has been cast as ahsoka atana Ahsoka Tana, uh, there you go. Uh, I always add that A in there. In cl- uh, not in Clone Wars, she's you know that's already filmed in The Mandalorian season two. So Taylor, I'm gonna get your first impressions. What do you think about the casting? What do you think about Ahsoka coming to live action? And what do you think about her placement in uh, Mandalorian season two? And if that's the right place to put her for live action? Uh, yeah, you know, I think personally, I think it's it's ideal. I think it's something that. <sighs> It, it, I think it's it's what fans have wanted for a long time because especially because there was a rumor that went around with Rosaria Rosario Miss Dawson was like rumored <laughs> to be <laughs> rumored to be um, you know or not rumored but like the people were like pairing her up and saying you know this would be like a great fit and like all of a sudden now here it is and I think she even expressed interest in the character too a long time ago so mm-hmm. like if this is turns out to be true like I'm 100% on board for it I think that's awesome um so I, I'm just I'm happy and I think that her appearing in the season two of the Mandalorian is definitely ideal. I think it's uh I think it's almost like a must to be honest because depending on whether or not we get like season two or not season two but like this <laughs> next series of Rebels that continues that story, I think you know there's so much time uh, where Ahsoka is going off on her own journey with um. S- what was her name sabine wren i think mm-hmm. from rebels and they go off to go and hunt and find ezra so it wouldn't be surprising you know to see her doing some some more stuff post return of the jedi yeah so i i'm excited by the news for many reasons one yeah you're right i don't think it was like rumors but it was a lot of like fan casting and a lot of like wouldn't this be perfect and blah, blah blah she has a similar look and yeah she did express interest but to me like when an actor or an actress expresses interest that doesn't mean too much because it's just like oh somebody is wanting to be in a very popular franchise and get paid a lot of money you know so it's like that's never like to me it's like oh this this means something so i i'm honestly quite surprised by it i am happy with it i'm the guy that always says canon doesn't matter and i think this this at least gets it a bit more into the light and hopefully 
you know, it is still a TV show, but hopefully her popularity or whatnot, or her being in the show, people would, uh, like, people, the higher ups would go, oh, you know, maybe people are fine with canon and whatnot, et cetera. You know, like, are fine with maybe not having to be in the movie, they'll know this character. Who knows what her arc is in Mandalorian Season 2, but I think it's a good idea. It's not the movie, so I'm still waiting for them to say, hey, we have Ahsoka Tana, she's in Ahsoka Tana, she's in the movies, you know, you have to follow this, this, this. But a TV show, they are doing big things with it, so I think this is them dipping their... Darth Maul and Solo is them dipping their toes with it, but clearly that didn't end up working for them with solo and everything so they didn't get to experience further so i'm always down for more can and whatnot i always say can doesn't matter just because i feel like they don't treat it like it matters you know there's lots of characters and whatnot that are not around not really mentioned and they're made to be like oh this is a big deal but in the movies and now with the tv show it's like ah it doesn't really matter that much but we got a hint of that with the dark saber last season so i guess this is that lightsaber fight that uh, has been hinted at by a few people eh? you would imagine I would think so. I think we're going to probably, like, I would be down to get live-action Ahsoka thrown into the mix with, um, God, I'm trying to remember, uh, what was his name? Moff Gideon. Cat- Moff Gideon, yeah. Yeah, Moff Gideon rocking the Darksaber, or if we get, you know, God, I don't even know, but just to, to, to understand and think about how Ahsoka could be, like, the future caretaker for... The, the child, just Baby Yoda, just gives me goosebumps. I think that would be so good because Ahsoka has such a good defining idea and sense of the Jedi, which is why she left because she has like a good heightened belief of what they should be and what embodies the Jedi Order. So I think she'd be the perfect mentor to take on an apprentice in the sense of like Baby Yoda. Yeah, I didn't think about her and the Baby Yoda connection. That That's actually intriguing because that could be how they write them off as far as they go on their own adventures and maybe... Hell, maybe they go off and, well, there's two things. One, they could go off and I think Baby Yoda and Ahsoka as a show could work, right? Like her as a master and an apprentice. But even then, if Baby Yoda doesn't go with Ahsoka, this could be a really good backdoor plot pilot to a live action Ahsoka show. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, I feel like uh, as far as it goes for like Jedi around in this time period, bet- at this point in time, I really do think Luke was the only Jedi off of my knowledge in canon aside from Ahsoka, who obviously wasn't a Jedi, but was a Force user doing her own thing. So I liked, I liked the idea of, you know, there's no one else around, and they don't want to touch Luke, because Luke's doing his own thing. So, I mean, it makes sense, because we need to have a Jedi-wielding lightsaber figure in this show at some point. And the Mandalorian, with the, I think it was more like a foreshadow. You know, when the welder, she was basically telling him, like, oh, you know, you're going to have to go out there and find his people yeah. and find these Jedi. And, you know, he's, like, hesitant on it. So I think it just makes sense to throw Ahsoka into the mix and just what's going to happen. Because I think if they give Baby Yoda to Ahsoka, then we know that Baby Yoda is safe and isn't going off with Luke and getting killed by Kylo Ren. Yeah, that's true. But we don't know if he's safe because Ahsoka's confirmed dead, though, right? As much as Filoni wants to share his um, her and Gandalf photos. That, no, they can't take that back. They can't say, oh, she was alive after she, like, force spoke to Rey. Because, again, through all the events of Rise of Skywalker, that trilogy, where the fuck is she then, right? So. Well, that's just it. We just need more information. Because, I mean, I mean, technically, we don't know if she's confirmed dead. We're assuming because she did a, fo- a force voice. But, I mean, there could be any explanation for that. She could have went off to some force base or something force jedi temple and been speaking to the force who knows so we just need we just need more information kind of spread around yeah and then as far as the casting i'm i'm a big fan you can check out my reviews with dylan we did uh, we haven't done daredevil season one but daredevil season two and luke cage and she was in all those shows um she's great she's a fantastic actress and everything she does with zombie land the kevin smith movies i think she's like it is good when you get people like oh, oh she looks like the character but you also want someone that can act right like there's so many people like yeah tom hardy is a shorter guy and i loved how he played bane and that's the way it worked but if you went and got a bodybuilder to play bane you wouldn't have got the same performance that tom hardy gave right so look is only so much it's the same thing when people first complain about hugh jackman he's too tall for wolverine and now no one gives a shit about that so it's like to me the, that the fact that she looks like kind of ahsoka when you you've seen the fan art whatnot is just a bonus i just want a great actress it doesn't matter who it was if it's a big name a middle name a no name uh, and i know some people are maybe bummed that the voice actress isn't doing that but that's a rare case right we've never really seen that in star wars like a voice actor or actress doing the voice carrying over to the 
that because what Forrest Whitaker took over and you know Ray Park never did the voice like he did the action but uh, I, I get why some people might be disappointed but it's I, I I think if you were expecting the voice actress to be her I think that was a mistake in my well, opinion. Well but in that sense you know you never know I mean they could go ahead and do that like with Solo they had Ray Park act and uh um um what's his pickle uh sam witwer vo- uh like voice true right? yeah you're right i totally forgot about that yeah and since you know ahsoka is more or less like a lot of makeup and like costume it might be easier for them to pull it off yeah so yeah that's very exciting i hope it's true it's not confirmed confirmed but it's running by like some good sources like people that like have good track records and whatnot so hopefully it is true i i think ahsoka and i think taylor made a lot of good points there. i think ahsoka could be a really nice nugget add in Mandalorian. Mandalorian already, I think, has a lot of hype. Yeah, there's some people that don't love it entirely, but I think for the most part, it delivered. Like I said, it kind of hit, like, it, I don't think it was a home run, but it got a run on the baseball field. It was considered a win, especially after Rise of Skywalker, which is like Last Jedi all over again. It's very in the middle, right? It's mixed, where most people, I think, at least like the Mandalorian. So I think that's a win for them. I think adding Ahsoka is a good thing because you get the can junkies in there. And yeah, I, th- I think it opens up introduce. Uh, inter- interesting story aspects and i do hope it maybe leads to seeing her more i hope it leads to more canon stuff so that gets me more excited for mandalore in season two i hope uh who knows because those other disney plus shows like wandavision and falcon and loki they all had to start stop shooting and mandalore and finish shooting right yeah i believe so so i do wonder in the next six months like let's say you know we try not to talk about we always try and have fun time here but let's say lots of these virus shutdowns and whatnot it's going to go on quite a bit longer and let's say it goes on to the point where a falcon winter soldier which is supposed to come out in august can't shoot or can't anything if mandalorian is done and ready to go i could see a lot of swapping of release dates do you think i think so they're they're gonna have to play their cards pretty close to their chest as far as what's you know what's gonna happen i mean we've i don't think this has ever ever really happened i mean ever so this is just it's huge yeah not not to this extent in like the entertainment landscape and we're going to talk about more on the newscast because like stuff like onward is coming to disney plus in a few weeks there's rumors about wonder woman being streamed so if you're interested in that conversation check out our newscast that's going to drop the other thing we don't know for sure we're going to be testing out but if you're a call duty warzone we're trying to sunday night we're going to try and have some fun with the fans we're going to try to a youtube stream we don't know how long we might start we don't have a confirmed time but maybe like seven ish like uh, uh what would it be pacific and we're gonna try and stream it'd be me dylan and taylor there's gonna be more details on that in the newscast so check that out but uh, and taylor you got something to pimp out that you just dropped yeah yeah so if you're a big fan of you know zombies and being isolated right now uh <laughs> i don't know if you're a big fan of it right now yeah probably not uh go go check out my review for kingdom season two it's, it covers a little bit of season one in there as well and but it's a non-spoiler spoilers clash review so check it out it's very very good yeah. mm-hmm. all right so clone war season seven gone with a trace we're talking about episode five here after leaving the jedi order ahsoka tana finds herself in the underworld of coruscant where she meets an aspiring Aspiring, at, uh, aspiring pilot Trace Martez, enlisted by Trace's sister Rava to help build a dangerous droid. Uh, Ahsoka opts to keep her past, her Jedi past secret. And you know what sucks, ladies and gentlemen, because we're talking about this Skype and remote casting. The first time I did that read, I legitimately, and I have no proof. Actually, I do have proof. Mail put the end of this one. I did a flawless reading, and it was, it was, it's gone now. You know, not not in this type of uh, timeline. So, Taylor, what do you think about this episode? I was trying to scare you and make you think I was disconnected again. You son of a bitch. Uh, All I see is this <laughs> stupid Lego man from Lego Movie with no talking. I'm just like, oh my goodness. So, uh, What do you think uh, about this episode? Um, yeah, this episode, I, I, I quite enjoyed it. You know, it just felt like a good, like, simple back to our Roots Clone Wars episode. It felt like, you know, just Ahsoka it just had some action in there and just story and just what what is she up to you know i liked how we got like the flashback scene of like her leaving the temple and all that stuff and just how things have changed and she looks much older now you know i don't feel like this episode is directly right after the events of that one it just feels like okay a lot of time has passed probably like a year maybe even you could say and it's just things have gotten a little different for her and she's adjusting to this new life so really really cool yeah, no, I agree with you. I think it's probably been some time past. Yeah, I like. I thought this was a, I could say a perfect episode. I don't think it would rank up there with some of my favorite episodes. I don't think it would be a top tenner, but just perfect as far as I had no complaints. It was a good setup episode, but it also just felt like it was its own one-off episode. Like, I think we're going to get, more, obviously we're getting more of the Soka, but we're going to get 
just more I think with these two characters you think the sisters or no um I think we're gonna yeah we'll get more I'm pretty confident we do otherwise why would they introduce them on this large of a scale right yeah exactly so that's why I think it was a good setup but these are the perfect setups where it doesn't just feel like a bunch of filler like some stuff happens you got some action there you got some intrigue I knew at the end like right at the well we'll get we'll wait till spoilers but I think they did a really good job of this being a setup episode but you could honestly just watch this as a standalone episode I think if you like Ahsoka you really like this and I think this is cool to see her doing the like you know Obi-Wan Luke Yoda thing but it's in a much different way she's gone out of the Jedi but it's like not she's not being a hermit she's not hiding she's trying to get away and make somewhat of a life or do something but it's not um, it, it's not in those ways and obviously she's a very different character so it's good to see that it's not the same way and we, we kind of obviously with Rebels we know she's bouncing around but this is just immediately after right so I was always wondering is she going to be really hiding is she going to be you know she's out in the open and she's hiding her past but still like she she is putting herself out there and by the end of this episode she really really puts herself out there so um yeah i really enjoy this episode high ratings for me and i i prefer these episodes more i really liked that one episode of the bad batch in the middle but the rest of my i all enjoyed but it was like a lot of action i like the story more i like seeing her adventure i like seeing her just having quiet moments with uh was rava the good sister or was it trays that was the good sister i think it was rava that was the good sister. yeah and i like their moments i liked their dynamics and i actually liked those two characters which is good because that happens in clone wars a lot where you get introduced to somebody and they're just annoying so i i think they did a good oh, yeah. job and uh yeah i enjoyed this episode we can talk about spoilers now if you're ready uh i am ready where do you want to start off um i guess just like her or like her kind of journey this part where she's like obviously she's got like a broken down speeder and you know it's not like her luck is like really down in the dumps for her but she's just trying to like make a well, I don't even know, because, like, we didn't get a sense of, like, what is her objective. I guess she's just trying to survive, but it didn't seem like she was scraping the bottom of the barrel. It seemed like she was just, um, I don't know, having trouble. And I like that, you know, it should really showcase that she's not rich anymore, you know. Being the Jedi Temple, it was high, high tidy mm-hmm. you know, high class, you know, all that stuff. And in this sense, it's just, like, you get to see, like, okay the the people more of their perspective like of the jedi and you know she's trying to like make her case and defend the jedi a little bit but you know it's they're not wrong and i feel like she's gonna have more of a a, a view of what the jedi are dealing with these people yeah i agree i do agree that there is some fun as far as we don't know what's going on we don't know where she's going we don't she might not even know and that's the fun thing too she might i don't know if she really has a plan she's just kind of going out there seeing the world but maybe she has a plan maybe she has objective but i don't think that's it i think she's just trying to get day by day and i think she's just trying to get as far as she can till she kind of has a plan or something like that you know i don't think i don't think she's thinking too far along but not in the stupid way but i do like seeing her like i was talking about with the luke and yoda thing we don't see that portion right we just see the time when they've left even obi-wan and that's why i'm always interested in the obi-wan shows because obi-wan last time we see him he's at tatooine the next time he's old hermit and a shack somewhere right yoda we see him in revenge of sith and then we see him on dagobah crazy acting crazy same thing with luke right we always get these big gigantic leaps and we never get to see that in between portion and obviously as of right now we know ahsoka is not going to end up as some hermit that's like a recluse but even then it is a similar journey of leaving something because they don't agree with it or because they're in danger and I like seeing all her little adventures. And I like, like I said, I think maybe we'll be revealed. I don't think so. I think we'll kind of get a, I think something in the uh, these episodes will point her a direction or she, yeah, I just don't think she has a goal right now. I don't think she will. So whether it's something she discovers and she goes that way or something she's brought into, because obviously we know she's going to fight Maul. And that's the thing. Does she go to Maul or does Maul come to her? It's hard to say because, you know, she gets kind of caught up with the mandalorians we know at some point and i don't know what story arc that is like what it depends how much they're going to cover in this story arc alone i mean it's just there's a lot there's a lot still left to cover i feel in this season i feel like there's not enough time but i mean there's there's seven more episodes to go so i i'm not sure because i do feel like this is going to bridge and we're going to have ahsoka connect with anakin and obi-wan again at some point really you think they're going to meet up yeah, just based on the trailers, you know, when it shows the hologram of Ahsoka and the Mandalorians, uh, like, trying to talk to Anakin and Obi-Wan, so... Hmm, yeah, I... 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 I guess, because my worry, like I've said a few times, is I wonder how much 
uh, Obi-Wan's actually in the show. And I just feel like, because I've not gotten that part in Rebels, but I feel like they made such a big deal of uh, Ahsoka and Vader fighting right and him getting the helmet knocked off and him seeing her. And I felt that maybe they were kind of trying to insinuate that that was the first time they had seen each other since. Oh, yeah. And is there anything in canon that would dispute that as of right now? Right now, well, we know that Anakin does in the season give her two lightsabers back, remember? In the trailer? Yeah, so I guess they disputed that themselves, really. So, yeah, I guess you're right. So, they will have to link up. I, Like I said, I want Obi-Wan to be around just because I like Obi-Wan. He's an important character, and so far lately he's kind of had the just the the shelf he hasn't been on any episode like he's been there but he's just been around the most biggest thing we got him was that you know that uh padme anakin scene so i want at least one episode especially with maul you would think he's gonna have some sort of dynamic with him right yeah you would think so he's just at this point yeah he's just poking anakin's fire oh god poke i don't know if i want to have that image in my in my head (laughs) um let's see here what else? Did, anything else you want to talk about? What do you feel about the the two sisters? Uh, um, two sisters. They were they were unique. Like I I wasn't sure how I felt about the younger one who was like trying to be super friendly and help Ahsoka out because she seemed like really pushy about trying to help her out and it didn't make much sense. But I like where she was coming from. She was just you know a good good down to earth kind of person. And her older sister is just you know scum of the earth. Well, almost of, scum like, of the earth. Corella- she reminds me of Corella Deville, kind of, for some mm-hmm. reason. I don't know why, but she just, uh, she's like shady, you know, trying to like scoot by on a job and screw people over kind of thing. And she doesn't have much high regard for Ahsoka, which I kind of get a kick out of that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, I, I like how this journey of her trying to suppress the Force kind of and her abilities, she broke that and she did it to save the one sister and that i like that little twilight kid that spotted her do it yeah that was good yeah i, I was almost worried it was going to be that guy from the mandalorian the brother not that the kid the uh, when the guy walks up because he was walking up and he looked like he had a tank top on and he was very blue and i was like oh no please don't work him into the series oh somehow. no what is that, yeah, that guy yikes yeah i don't <laughs> want that so yeah i don't think i have too much to say other than i kind of knew she was going to get uh she was going to get, um, what the, heck? was going to use the force. It was very similar to baby Yoda, the way it was kind of laid out as far as, okay, there, I, I, and I actually really quite liked the robot scene. I thought the action was really good. It was fun. It was creative run through the city, destroying everything. And then I knew that, okay, robot is after the one, of the sister is there falling. Ahsoka catches it and it's falling and go, oh, she's going to use the force here. And then they like sneak, like they like try to trick you as far as like, no, Ahsoka gets out of it and pulls like a Jurassic world or Jurassic park when they're getting the car and they hink, like hook it up to the building and she's pressing the button to pull it up and it didn't work and that's where it's starting to fall like okay she's gonna use force and she obviously did so that secret's out obviously i think you'll get more backstory in the next few episodes about like why she left or how she's feeling at this point if she's regretting it if she's not but i think that was the right amount of tease and i like seeing her uh be a non-jedi for a while or not using the powers but now she's using them and i think obviously she's gonna use them big time when wall comes into play but uh yeah i i thought that was all done really well yeah yeah no i agree um, Anything else? I'm trying to think. Uh, I think it was a pretty basic episode, hard, but yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was basic. I mean, there wasn't anything like, super granular. It was just it was super cool to see Ahsoka come back, and we had moments that were like reminiscent of when Luke was on Tatooine, looking up, you know, at the twin suns. There was that moment Ahsoka had where she was kind of gazing up at the ship taking off, and then I think even the sim- same score kind of cued in there a little bit. Yeah, oh, it definitely did, like the Force theme in a way, so that was a nice little touch. Yeah. And then it cut off like right when the powers were done. It was this big battle. It was just hinting like, oh, yeah, she's something greater, and then it stopped, so. Yeah, yeah, so. It, uh, yeah, overall, like, I, I, I enjoyed that, and I enjoyed, like, the, the brief bit of, like, action that she had and the girl sister was like oh where'd you learn to fight like that and she's like oh my brother taught me which i like that they threw that in there because people love to insinuate anakin and ahsoka's like having a relationship which is really weird so i'm glad that they like threw that in there like oh no brotherly sisterly you know friendship yeah yeah uh what would you give this episode oh i would give this episode probably yeah, I would give it two thumbs up. I, I don't like. It's not that I didn't like it. I enjoyed it. It was a good, humble, 
you know, back to our roots kind of Clone Wars episode. And it just has me excited for what's to come. Yeah, I am too. I think, like you said, I am a tad worried with the number of episodes. I know people are like, oh, seven, that's still a lot. Because that's like, what, that's, well, it is a lot, but it's still just an hour and a half, a little less than, like, well, I guess I'll, I'll round up to an hour and a half because they're usually 22 or 23 minute episodes. So I feel that. I, I, you know, wanting another season, that's not going to happen because it's the final season. But I am interested. I, you could ask me in a few weeks, though, because the only reason I say I worry it's not enough, because sometimes Clone Wars, they like to, like, like kick rocks and pal around. I felt like same thing with the Bad Batch episodes. There's one that could have been shortened into two, pretty much. And I don't want that to be the case here. So that's why I worry. But, yeah, I would give it two thumbs up. Same way. It, it isn't in the sense where I think it's, like, one of the best all times episodes. I just think it was a really solid kind of like mini adventure episode and i didn't think there was i didn't have any negatives there's nothing where oh that was dumb that didn't make sense even times where i'm like oh it's supposed to be a kid's show or or they're saying oh it's adulty but then acts really kiddie or vice versa it didn't really have that so i i don't have any cons anything like that so that's why i gotta rock the two thumbs up yeah right on yeah cool all right so you guys can find us taylor where can they find us yeah, you can find us with your internet connection in the search bar, ladies and gentlemen. Geek for Space podcast. You find tons of stuff there. Yeah, and just like I said earlier, check out our Facebook and oh, lots of, lots of fun stuff. Geekforce.ca. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, yeah, as you can know, if you want any updates on our scheduling, what's coming up, just go to the podcast I did not too long ago. Uh, it's in the feed. You get updates. But yeah, just YouTube, uh, all the audio. Let's see. We're, we're so many places now, Taylor. We're on Spreaker. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple. But that's where the best thing is. Go down in the description or go to geekfirst.ca or Twitter or Facebook to follow up with casts that are happening. But if not, just go down in the description below and everything's there. So we hope you support and you uh, subscribe and like because we got lots of good stuff. Yeah, we got... Uh, we got some issues to figure out here. We're going to, you know, fine tune the Skype casting and whatnot. So, or, or the remote casting. So we will get there at some point, but until then we're going to try and give you the best quality and the best quantity and all that good stuff. So anything to say, Taylor? Nope. That is everything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a great rest of the week and may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>